you know, my, so really what you have is, I think at the end of the day, Microsoft having more control than OpenAI. Uh, they have access to all the source code, they have access to all the weights of the um, you know, GPT-4 and future versions. So they have all rights to this. To, to, You mentioned uh, NVIDIA, so let me just talk about AI and bring it back to that for a second. Can you tell us um, your regrets, but also the positives of the experience you had with OpenAI, and then what your goals are with uh, XAI? Well, the AI discussion is, is certainly a long one, <clears throat> or could be a long one. Um, you know, digital superintelligence that might be the most significant technology that humanity ever creates. Um, and, and it has the potential to be more dangerous than um, nu nuclear weapons. So, um, you know, in the case of creating OpenAI, it was to ha have there not be a unipolar world where um, Google, with its subsidiary DeepMind, uh, you know, would control an overwhelming amount of AI talent and compute and, and resources, uh, which then is somewhat dependent on basically how, how Larry Page uh, and, and Sergey Brin um, and Eric Schmidt believe things should go, because they, they cream three of them, or two, two out of three have control over Alphabet, because they've got super voting rights. And, um, you know, I was quite concerned based on some conversations I had with Larry Page, uh, where, um, you know, he did call me a specious. <laughs> being pro humanity, and um, so I'm like, what side are you on? All right, you know, uh, not ours, we would say. Um, you know, I think, and uh, so, so you know, I felt like uncomfortable um, having the entire future of digital superintelligence be in the hands of someone who called me a species uh, for being pro humanity. Um, you know, how can it not be? Uh, so. That's yes, OpenAI was originally created as an open source nonprofit, and now is a closed form. It appears to be it should be renamed closed for Max Nonprofit AI. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it is it is closed, um, and they are aiming to I think make try to make a hundred billion dollars. I think according to Sam Altman, uh, get a hundred billion dollars from somewhere for some vast amount of compute uh, to create digital god. Um, Apparently, all the, the weights are stored in a common separated value file, by the way. So, our digital god will be a CSV file. <laughs> How do we import it? <laughs> file yeah, import just god. Yeah, it's Excel, you know. Um, see what happens. Um, so, so now, anyway, the, so it's now uh, opening eyes and what uh, is also very closely aligned with Microsoft. You know, Microsoft is really. You know, um, the OpenAI servers are running on in, in Azure and Microsoft data centers. You know, my, so really, what you have is, I think, at the end of the day, Microsoft having more control than OpenAI. Uh, they have access to all the source code. They have access to all the weights of the um, you know, GPT-4 and future versions. So they have all rights to this to, to thing. It's not um, at, at any point really they could cut off OpenAI. I, I don't think OpenAI quite realizes that the depends on, on Microsoft. And even if Microsoft does break some contract, they'll just be tied up in litigation for, you know, for years. Um, so really you've got a contest between kind of like Google and Microsoft. Google, as I mentioned, I'm concerned about, you know, uh, Larry not, not caring enough about AI safety and um, good reason. And then Microsoft just is, is a, I think, you know, a, a profit-seeking organization. Um, and I, I, you know, I think such is great, but um, I, I can't say like, you know, that it would be difficult to say that, that Microsoft has a has an amazing track record in moral decision-making. 
So, uh, <laughs> diplomatic. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so so uh, so I was like, okay, look, let's just so it's, I think let's try to create a third company that is competitive. I I do, I do think Tesla is underrated from an AI standpoint in terms of real world AI. Tesla has the best re real world AI. So, uh, you know, hopefully between uh, XAI and uh, Tesla, there's kind of a third contender for well, visual super. Well, would you look? You've done uh, you open source your patents at Tesla. You yeah. are very pro open source your source code at X. Would you ever considering releasing Dojo and FSD more as a platform substrate for everybody else, or that's sort of off the table right now? Well, I don't know that, uh, you know, in the case of, of say, Dojo or our or inference hardware that's in the car, our inference computer, which is actually a lot, lot more compute than Dojo, by the way. Um, you know, we, we've got I don't know, somewhere in the order of 4 million cars that have um, high-speed AI inference computers in them. Um, you know, like open sourcing chip designs doesn't mean you, you suddenly get that thing. Yeah. You know, uh, so um, you can open source the software, but I think chip designs, it's the, the, the only ones that could actually use those chips or really, uh, yeah, but would, would be some someone that's willing to spend many billions of dollars on, um, on a computer development. So anyway, I think I think in the case of uh, you know Dojo is interesting. Optimist is really interesting. Um, anyway, I think just in general, Tesla is uh, one of the world's leading AI companies, uh, and in some respects, the leading AI company when it comes to real real world AI, understanding the real world and, and actually reacting to that with self driving. Um, and, so, and I think that will become part of the, the solution for AGI or general superintelligence. So, um, uh, in the case of te Tesla, I think we've got a sort of a, a good governance structure in that there's no super voting rights or anything like that. So if I'm, you know, go crazy, the shareholders of Tesla can vote me out. Um, you know, I have a, a, enough of vote to be, you know, I think, moderately influential, but not enough to stay in, even if I'm doing crazy stuff. So I think that's actually good. Um, um, I'm told we have to yeah. wrap him. Oh, okay. Uh, just on the FSD, before we wrap, I'll let you go. Um, we were talking earlier this year and you said, uh, hey, maybe ChatGPT 4.0-like moment for self-driving was coming. And uh, I've, I've been playing with the beta and um, yeah, how, how close does it feel to you? Because it, it, some of the rides it's been doing for me are pretty darn impressive. The latest um, beta is pretty incredible. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty neat. I, you know, I used to love it on the highways and on the streets. I'd be like, okay. But now I'm using it increasingly on the streets. So where do you, how do you feel about it right now? And I, I guess you made a lot of predictions on it over the years. Um, but it, it does feel like it's getting pretty close. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's very close to uh, you know, being in a situation where even if there's no human oversight or intervention, that the probability of uh, a safe journey is is higher with FSD and no supervision, like even if you're asleep in the car, than if the person is driving. Um, we were very close to that. Uh, you know, those that have the uh, FSD beta, which really anyone can get at this point. Um, so, we're, we're the, the my, the, the miles we see driven under the FSD beta currently are uh, much safer than the miles that are driven without it. Hmm. So um, that's uh, you know that's that's already a, a very good milestone. Um, but you, but uh, you know if you, you can just see that it's getting better. And better. Like um, if you see if you, if you compare the uh, you know FSD beta today versus six months ago versus not you know a year ago versus eighteen months ago. It's really the improvement is dramatic, yeah. um, and um, you know, we've got the final piece of the puzzle, which is to have the control part of the car uh, transition from about 300,000 lines of C++ code to uh, also a neural network. So hmm. the you know the whole system will be neural net a neural network, um, photons in to controls out. 
And, and, and that, that, that's kind of the final piece of the puzzle for full self-driving being significantly better than human. Wow. Awesome. Uh, thanks for taking the time, buddy. Uh, fly safe, and I'll see you shortly. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated with more startup and tech stories like this. This is Tech and Butter. Thanks for watching.